and the people of God said amen. Amen. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Can we give God a hand clap of praise today? Come on, we can do better than that. We want to rejoice and give God praise for the life of our loved one, Sister Mildred Thompson. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the life that she lived and all the lives that she touched. We certainly are grateful for all that God has done through her, in her, and with her. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask Pastor Rocket Schrabel to come with our invocation. Following the invocation, we'll have a selection by the Wings of Faith Choir, prayer by Pastor E. Ford, and following that, Old Testament, uh, Minister J. Taylor, Jr., New Testament, Minister M. Jalakur, in that order, please. actually forgotten how many years my mother has been a part of our church fellowship, I guess uh, eight to ten years, and uh, it's always a joy. Uh, anytime I come into service, Sister Thompson is sitting right over here, second row, and uh, we always had a greeting time. Am I not on? Yeah. Something's not working right. <laughs> Sometimes it happens if you don't hit the right button. <laughs> So Sister Thompson would sit right over here on the second row, and um, about part way into our service, we'd always have a fellowship greeting time. And I always made it uh, over to her to just greet her and thank her for the life that she lived, the person that she was. I always tell her how blessed I was that she was a part of our church family, and she'd always respond to me as as Vita has stated in the. Uh, obituary that uh, pastor I prayed for you this morning four o'clock so mother Thompson that means something to me I mean that with all sincerity and the, um, uh, the number one question I have is who's going to take her place which of us can be the one the Lord raises up and uses uh, for that very purpose to call upon the king of kings and the lord of lords on behalf of family and friends and churches and world situations and so forth. She was a great, great woman of God. And I'm so blessed. We here at Wings of Faith were so blessed to have her as a part of our church family these last number of years. And um, this time, let's stand together and let's go to the Lord in prayer. And We know the scripture teaches us that to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. I don't know exactly how it happened. I wasn't there in the moment that her spirit left her body. I don't know exactly how that transpires. I do have a strong conviction that we live in the, both the natural and the supernatural. That the supernatural the spiritual realm is just beyond the veil. We can't see it, but it's there. She didn't fly away to some cosmos somewhere. She just left this natural tent that she dwelt in. She came into her, her heavenly dwelling. She went from glory to glory. Hallelujah. So thankful. Hallelujah. 
So let's join our hearts together today as we celebrate the life of this wonderful woman of God. And I know for those of you that are family members that have known her the longest, this is a sweet time, but also a bitter time. Sweet as it relates to the memories that you hold on to, bitter that she's no longer with you. Yet we rejoice because we know where she is. No more pain, no more suffering. All those things are gone. Just rejoicing. So let's pray. Lord, we're so grateful today that we have the privilege, Lord, first and foremost of knowing you, the great and awesome God, the God that Isaiah described that said, there is no other God before you. There will be no other God after you. You alone are God. God, today we're so thankful, we're so grateful for the life of Mother Thompson. All of us, Lord, who are here today have been touched and have been enriched because of the life of this wonderful woman of God. Lord, we're so thankful for her life. We're so thankful for the wonderful memories that we have of her. We're so thankful, Lord, that now she is dwelling with you forever. Hallelujah. Knowing that old things have passed away. Knowing, Lord, that all things have become new. New, Lord. We thank you for that. Lord, be with us and help us through this celebration service. Touch each person that is participating. Every word that is spoken, every prayer offered. That, Lord, you will be glorified. And that Mother Thompson will be honored. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord one more clap offering of praise.
you ought to act and say it like you mean it. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, we ain't got no sad story. We got victory. All right. Amen. I'm a prophetess, former pastor before she got here. So it's good to be here. She's always the same. She lived what she preached. Yes, she did. Amen. That's what she said. Amen. 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 So let us pray. Man that is born of a woman has put but a few days full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shot and continued not. We brought nothing into this world, and it's certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation, of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, our Ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. O Lord and Master, who didst weep beside the grave and are touched with the feelings of our sorrow, fulfill now thy promise that thou will not leave thy people comfortless, but will come to them. Here we pray, O Lord, and comfort thy people and enable us to put our trust in thee who are mighty in life and triumph in death. Grant us to serve thee day by day that we may find eternal fellowship with thee, perfecting rest in thee. We ask God that he will strengthen the family in their bereaved time. When they think on prophetess, they remember that she had a good life and she fulfilled her call. Amen. All this we ask you in the precious name of Jesus our Lord, we do pray. Amen. 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 Psalm 61, she said this every morning, every Sunday morning since she took me in. Hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been shelter for me in a strong tower for the enemy. I will abide in that tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covenant of thy wings, Eli. For thou, O God, has heard my cry. Thou hast given me the inheritance of those that fear thy name. Thou wilt prolong the king's life at this end and many generations. Oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve them, that I may daily perform my rights. scripture I'll be reading is 1 Corinthians uh, 15th chapter. We're going to start at the 50th verse. 50 through 58. I tell you this, brothers and sisters, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, 
For the trumpet will sound, mm. and the dead will rise, yes. Yes. imperishable, Hallelujah. and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, yes. Yes. and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, yes. Yes. then shall then shall come to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is your victory O death where is your sting the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that the Lord, knowing that in the Lord, your labor is not in vain. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. We definitely want to thank this choir for ministering to us through song. Amen. Amen. And I believe that all of us uh, can be a witness that there's nothing that's going to steal our joy. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. And I'm sure uh, that was Aunt Mildred's testimony. Yes. Nothing was going to steal her joy. No matter what she had to face, no matter what she had to endure, she knew where her help came from and it came from the Lord. And we certainly thank uh, these ministers and the pastor for the prayer and these other ministers for the scripture reading. At this time, we're going to have words to the family from Pastor W. Johnson, following Pastor Johnson, Minister Deborah Hartley, and then following that, Miss Kay Berrien will come with acknowledgement of cards, the reading of the obituary by the daughter, Sister Vita Wilson, and then a selection by Williams Johnson and the Tampa Bay Gospel Legends. And following the choir, Pastor Rock is going to come and share with us the words of comfort. Following him, uh, the gospel legends will come back once again, and then the services will be in the hands of the funeral home. Let the church say amen. amen. First John 4, 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God. And whoever loves has been of God and knows God. We come today to celebrate the life and the legacy of our own mother, Mildred Thompson. Now, when I think about a legacy, it means that you've left something behind. And so I want to just talk to you just for a moment about three things that this family and friends can take. The first thing that we know that Mother Mildred left behind was her faith. Yes, yes, yes. She had that faith and that prayer life that believed without a doubt that she can move mountains. And so we thank God for that. The next thing she left behind was her love for her family. Yes, yes. We know that she loved Peter, Pio, and, and Vita, and all the grandchildren, and all the children. If you look at the program, you'll see how many children she raised. Yes. That was a special gift. Amen. And because she had a special gift, she left her love a favor of God. Because no one but a God could allow her to raise the number of children that she did. Amen. So there's something about the scripture that has already been read, but early this morning at four o'clock this morning, it came to me. And so Mother Mildred would like us to say one more time, there's something here for us. In 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, the, 15, um, the 55th through the 58th verse, it says, O oh death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? You see, the sting of death is sin. 
and the strength of sin is the Lord. But then it goes on to say, but thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Who gives us the victory yes. through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, immovable, always, don't stop, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I asked Sister Deborah to come and stand with me and she's going to say something as well. However, many years ago, we are living testimonies of Mother Mildred's prophecy. She prophesied to me over 40, 47 years ago as a daughter-in-law that I was going to preach God's word. And I looked at her like, say what? <laughs> then shortly thereafter, Mr. Dr. Hartley shared with me as a long, young teenager, the same prophecy was given to her. And to God be the glory. Amen. So as we celebrate, I say to you and to all that are here, Mother Mildred, servant of God, yes, yes. well done. Amen. Good night, Mother Mildred. We'll see you in the morning. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. Because we know how Mother Mildred will praise the Lord. She will praise the Lord in season and out of season. I didn't come here to preach or anything like that, but I come here to tell you what I know how she lived in my life. First of all, she always said, look to the hills where cometh all our help, and all our help comes from the Lord, who made what? Heaven and earth. So to the people, to the children, to the grandchildren, to the great-great-grandchildren, to the ones that touched her life and the ones that she touched your life, you look to the hills. Because if you understand the story, it was about when they had to go up the side of the hill because they realized that the tabernacle was on top of the hill. And when the people would get to the top of the hill, they realized they would have some help. Well, I know you got to go through this. I know you got to go through that. But Mama Mildred was right there praying for you, helping you, talking with each one of you. That's why y'all sitting right here looking at me right now. Y'all all have a testimony how Mama Mildred touched your life. You all are waving your hands out there. I see that too because you already know. Y'all should be praising God up in here in this life because she gave you the opportunity. She prayed for you. She got up in the mornings. She spoke into your spirit. She claimed and prophesied and said, I shall declare. What now, what, she, what Juanes was talking about? I was 14 years old, and I remember when my Uncle Prentice would play, Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, and let me stand. But when I would go to New York, she took me in that back room. I was 14 years old, maybe it was just a traumatized situation. But she had me on the floor, tearing, crying out to God, 14 now. 14, that kind of stuff sticks in your head when you're traumatized on something. And when you're, and she's pouring oil on me. I'm like, what is going on? And nobody knows I'm up and in the bathroom, all the princess playing on the piano, presses, and I, I'm like, oh Lord Jesus, what's happening up in here? But I went down one time, I got him, and she said, pray, and I said, praise the Lord. Then I went down again, I said, praise the Lord, came up here. She said, you better pronounce it, and I started praising him. I started crying out to him. I started thanking him. I said, whatever you want to do, God, have your way in my life, whoever you want me to teach. So I went to uh, Haiti, and I've been to Jamaica, and I've been to Kenya. I've been prophesizing all over the world. That's because of this woman right here, this woman of God. Oh, y'all should be on your feet because you know what? Each one of y'all got a testimony to tell because she told me that one day I will rise up. And see, those two had to keep the money. They had to stay home and work the money. Pierre and Vida, they had to work the money. But I went out in the vineyard. There's always some that some children stay home and some that go out. She said, you will go forth. You will go out. 
in season and out of season. Oh, my husband died. That's right. But that's okay. That was a test. Just to see how I was going to endure that. Okay, I've been through a sickness, cancer survivor. But that's okay. That was a test. I passed that test too because I am healed. I no longer have cancer. So I know what I'm praising the Lord about. Y'all may not be walking about what y'all doing about because y'all got one too. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I know I look like a crazy woman up here. But I know my God. I know he lives. I know where my help comes from. And I know y'all do too. So children, children, whatever you do, never forget the values, the morals, the teaching that she taught you. Whether you like it or not, listen to your parents. Listen to your uncles. Listen to your aunts. Because you're about to get to know this one right here. Because I haven't seen any of y'all. But I know you now. Because I'm going to find wherever you at. So you know what? Grace be to God. May Vita, you continue to preach the word. You continue to stay on the Lord. The word never changed. Yeah. Look at here, honey. God's got a special blessing for you, Pierre. Right. Yeah, you've been through some stuff. Uh -huh. Excuse me, but you've been through hell and back. All right. But you know what? God's got you. Yes, like the footprints in the sand. Yeah. He's carrying you. So you continue to listen be still and know that he is God. He makes no mistakes. He makes no, nothing is a mistake. He makes no mistakes. He's just positioning you for what he's about to do in your life. And to everybody else, y'all here because she touched your lives. Continue to do God's will. Continue to proclaim what she has spoken into you and help you with. And not just do it for yourself, but do it for your children and your children's children. Because it's from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Resolutions, cards, and thank yous. Resolution in loving memories of Mother Mildred Thompson, September the 14th, 19, 2019. Since it has pleased the Almighty God to take our beloved sister on to her reward where she will join great clouds of witness in heaven. There is a hush in our hearts as we come together to pray and pay respect for the member of the ones who full life was ended when she was called to join the invisible heaven cameras. According to his tender mercy, God, who infinite in his wisdom has seen fit to move from I will miss our beloved sister in Christ, Mother Mildred Thompson, by means of death on Tuesday, September the 3rd, 2019. Whereas the passing of our beloved sister, Mother Mildred Thompson, uh, Deacon of uh, Deacon William Johnson, a member of the Tampa Bay Gospel Legend, has left us with a broken heart. We acknowledge and accept the will of God. We know our hearts bleed with sorrow, but a comfort by knowing God will not put more on us than we can bear. No matter what our trials are, how big our mountain seems, the Lord is there to see us through. He'll go to all extremes. So if your cross seems hard to bear and you know not what to do, the one who loves you most of all will be there to see you through. Therefore be it resolved that we embrace the Johnson, the Thompson family because all of us has a common bond that will connect us with the rest of our lives. We can't replace Mother Mildred Thompson, but we can accept to dis dis demonstrate her love for you. Be it further resolved to the family, we the Tampa Bay Gospel legend know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we share your sorrow. But more importantly, we recognize that 
this is heaven gain. When it is all over, we like you to remember in case there is a time when you just need some cheer. In case there's a problem you would like us to hear. In case there's a favor you would like for us to do. We're here to help you. If you need us to help you see it through. Humbly submitted on this 14th day of September 2019, the officers and the members of the Tampa Bay Gospel Legend, a copy of this resolution will be given to the family and another copy to be recorded in the archives. God bless and keep you. Humbly yours, Sister Marie Miller, President, Brother George Shiver, Vice President, and the Pastor Carl Bostrick, Secretary, the Tampa Bay Gospel Legend. Resolution in memories of Mother Mildred Thompson, September the 14th, 2014. Since it has pleased the Almighty God to take our beloved sister on to reward her, she will be great, uh, will join the great cloud to witness in heaven. Here it is now a hush in our hearts as we come together to pay our respect to the memories of the ones who full life was ended when she was called to join the Immensible Heavenly Counters. According to the tender mercy of God, who is infinite in the wisdom, has set fit to move our midst, our beloved sister, in Christ, Mother Mr. Thomas, by means of death on Tuesday, September the 3rd, 2019, where it is the passing of the beloved Sister Mildred Thompson, the aunt of Deacon William Johnson, a member of the mighty traveling stars, has left with us in a broken heart. We acknowledge and accept the will of God. We know our hearts bleed sorrow, but are comforted by knowing God will not put more on us than we can bear, no matter what the trials are, how big the mountain seems, the Lord is there to see you through. He'll go to all extremes, so if your cross seems so hard to bear, you know not what to do. The one who loves you most of all will be there to see you through. Therefore, be it resolved that we embrace the Johnson, the Thompson family because all of us have a common bond that will connect us the rest of our lives. We can't replace Mother Mildred Thompson, but we will accept to demonstrate her love. Be it further resolved, the family, we, my, the, we the mighty traveling stars know your loss to deep and sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we share your sorrow. But more importantly, we recognize the heaven game. When it is all over, we like you to remember in case there is a time when you need some cheer, in case you need, have a problem and like to hear, in case there is a favor you need us to do, we are here. Humbly submitted on this 14th day of September, the officers and members of the Mighty Traveling Stars, a copy to the, of this resolution will be given to the family. Another copy will be recorded in the archives. God bless you and keep you. Humbly submitted, Brother David Boston, President, and Deacon Mike Swell Corbett, Vice President, the Mighty Traveling Stars. Cards of kindness, Generosity, the Wings of Faith Fellowship. Ms. Thelma Wallender, Hart and Family. Ms. Paulette Tarminus, Miller and Family. Mr. and Mrs. Brian and Debbie Steele and Family. <coughs> One Restored. Deacon Eddie and Deacon S. Rita Johnson. Deacon Henry Johnson and Family. Cards of thank you. Condolence from Diana Bradford and family, Montreza and Johnson, E. Johnson and family, Miss Mary Alice Connings family, Kendrick's Hospice, Village Hospital Radiology Department, the Wallace family, Dolly Dixon Warren, the Gospel Legend, the Mighty Traveling Stars. 
cards also from John and Julie Brown and family. Acknowledgement, the family of the late Mildred Thompson wish to express their true acts of, of your true acts of kindness, food, flowers, during this time of laws. May God continue to bless each of every, in the, every one of you. Thank you. Mildred Thompson went to be with Jesus on September 3rd, 2019 at 9.30 p.m. Mildred lived in Ocala, Florida for 19 years. She was one of the church mothers of the Wings of Faith Fellowship. Mildred was born in the city of Drake, South Carolina on September 29, 1923. She was the daughter of Urine Crossland and Bill DeGrand, and her mother was Cora Miles. She was the youngest of 13 brothers and sisters. They were a, they were a large, happy, God-fearing family. Mildred gave her life to Jesus at a very young age, probably about nine. In 1946, she married the love of her life, Prentice Thompson, who passed away on about 20 years of marriage. He was a veteran of the United States Army. To this reunion, they had two children, Prentice and Vita. <laughs> Mildred was an ordained minister. She was also known as Snoop. We called her Precious, and she was also known as Prophetess from her former church, Soul of Heart. And Lady. And Lady. <laughs> um, her, her personality drew many people from all walks of life to God. Her motto was, I'll be praying for you 4 a.m. in the morning. Just give me your prayer requests. And those prayer requests that you did give, they're with her. And I made sure I collect all the ones that have not been read. So if she prayed for you, she has them still. She leaves the morning passing her son, Prentice Thompson, daughter, Vita K. Wilson, four grandkids, Justin, Sean, Sabrina, and Cedric, a daughter-in-law, Debbie, a son-in-law, Willie, a brother-in-law, Thomas. She raised five nieces and nephews, Tom, William, Pat, Sharon, before her passing, Francis, Eugene, and their kids, Byron, Willis, Gregory, Dexter, Chanel, Michael, Jeremy, James, Jr., Keisha, Trevor, Terrence, and Sean. I know them, so that's why I can talk that fast. <laughs> she also raised about approximately 35 other kids, a host of great nieces and nephews and cousins and family and friends. And we know that my mom was a soldier in the army of the Lord. I would like any person that came through the household that is a pastor, a minister, a deacon to stand up. That is just a morsel of the people that came through our household that my mother touched and she pushed all of us to serve God. I just want to thank you guys for coming. personally take this time to thank each and every one myself. I love my mama of 54 years. And I love her because her, my Uncle Prentice, which is my father's brother, who went home to be with the Lord in 1953, and Uncle Prentice went home in 1965. And that's when Mama Mildred and Uncle Prentice became my parents. And I think 
PL and Vita for allowing me to be their older brother. <laughs> I love you guys so much. And I thank God for each and every one. Pat, all of y'all that came through the house after I left. I know Vita thought I deserted her when I went to the military, but God had an assignment for me for 20 something, 20 years. And he blessed me because when I went to Key West, and that's when I met, and God allowed me to be in union with Pastor Johnson, and we had two beautiful children, my daughter Chanel, and also my son Dexter, which you heard Vita referred to. And the one thing I love about what Mama Mildred and our family, now, some people will look and they be thinking all kind of thoughts, but when you look at what Vita read about our mother, I think about our father and our family. And sometimes we get it mixed up because it was all about love, the bottom line. It was about love and it was about God. And God is the one that saved each and every one of us because that's what they prayed for. And that's why I can truly say that I am glad that I'm saved. God's blessed me to continue to do his work. That's why these people came here from Tampa. And last night, God allowed me to, on the road at 11, 12, what, 2 o'clock this morning? Almost 2 o'clock to get back here. So God could minister to you through her, through them, each one of them. But this particular song I wrote from my mama, but for my mama, Went home to be with the Lord. And he allowed me to give, well, he gave me this mama so I could share with you. And, and she played it for Mama Mildred. And I'm glad she got a chance to hear it before God called her home. Because I truly am glad that I am saved. Irregardless of what you may think, feel or say, we all are. Because we, amen, are looking to see her. That's what it's all about.
If you don't, if you don't believe that I've been born again, I want you to listen to me while I tell you about this man. When I got baptized at 13 years And he saved my soul I was young but he changed my heart Because he was preparing me for what he had And I thank God today Because Jesus died on the cross for you and for me and that's why right now mama I thank God that I'm free and that's why so acknowledge the goodness of the Lord scripture tells us it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance his kindness his goodness hallelujah oh Lord we're so thankful today for your kindness oh God for your goodness Lord for your mercy oh God hallelujah That kindness that eighty six years ago reached down and touched the heart of a nine year old little girl from Drake, South Carolina, that touched her heart and changed her heart forever. Jesus, when you came to live inside of her the salvation that was wrought in her heart that changed the course of her life and through her life has impacted every one of us in this house today. We are so thankful for the salvation that came to Mildred Thompson. We are so thankful for the salvation that has been expressed to us 
granted to us by your grace. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we bless you. Hallelujah. There are not enough words, Lord, for us to express the gratitudes of our heart, oh God, that you would reach down and touch a sinner like me. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap off the praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you'll just remain standing with me for just a moment as I read the scripture today that the Lord's put on my heart. Psalm 33, verse 4. Also, Psalm 116, verse 15. Psalm 33, verse 4. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. Psalm 116, 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Hallelujah. When the Lord called Sister Mildred these few short days ago, he called her precious. Precious, it's time to come home. 96 years of living, it's enough. Come on, enjoy. Enjoy what I've prepared for you. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I already feel like I've been to church. Hallelujah. Thank you, pastors and ministers, for every word spoken, every song sung. One thing I've learned a long time ago about the word of the Lord, it does not return void. Every word that is spoken will go out and it will accomplish what it is sent forth to do. Hallelujah. Every word that has been spoken in this house, these words have not fallen on deaf ears. They've fallen on, upon ears that are open to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. The words have been sown into good soil. The hearts of people here today that are receiving the seeds that have been sown. Thank you so much. So honored, Vita and Prentice, that you've allowed me to share for a few moments today at your mother's celebration of life service. So I thought about this thought about 96 years of living, 96 years of living, wow, thought about, well, what has transpired on the world stage during Mother Thompson's life, she was born in 1923. She was born before the first transatlantic flight. She was 10 years old at the rise of Hitler. She was 16 years old when World War II began. She was 18 years old at Pearl Harbor. She was 22 years old when the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. She was 25 years old when Israel became a nation. She lived to see Mao's communism take over China. She lived through the Korean War. She lived to experience the first man in space. She 
She was a wife and a mother when Martin Luther King in 1963 gave his famous speech, I Have a Dream. Yes. Yes. She lived to see and witness the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Yes. She witnessed the Six Day War, the first man on the moon, the first and only U.S. president to resign, that of Richard Nixon. She experienced the greatest famine the world has ever known in the Ethiopian famine of 1984. Other things like the Tiananmen Square massacre in China, the release of Nelson Mandela of South Africa after 27 years in prison, the first Gulf War, the 9-11 World Trade Center massacre, the capture of Saddam Hussein, the launching of Facebook, Hallelujah. <laughs> Mother Thompson has seen a lot as far as this world is concerned. Most of us here also in these present times witnessed the tsunami that killed more than 300,000 people in Indonesia in 2004. She witnessed Hurricane Katrina 2005. She saw the coming of the age of the iPhone. So thankful for the iPhone, the iPad, and the Mac Air, and all the other Apple products make life as a preacher so much easier today. Through all of these things, Mother Thompson lived as a faithful yes, she servant of God. Yes, and the few thoughts that I have relate to her relationship. Because of her relationship with a faithful God. Because God was faithful to her and she experienced his faithfulness. She in turn became, first and foremost, a faithful Christian. She learned early in life to put God first in everything that she did. I read this story years ago, but it's very meaningful to us in times like this. A professor standing in front of a classroom full of students, eager, overachievers. And he illustrated this by placing a large mouth jar, gallon jar on a table in front of him with different things displayed in front of him, rocks, gravel, sand. He began to fill this jar and he picked up these large rocks and placed inside this jar <clears throat> till he could not get any more in and he asked this classroom full of overachievers, is this jar full? They said, yes it is. At which point he reached over and grabbed the bowl full of gravel and began to pour the gravel in the jar and the gravel began to filtrate down through the large rocks and began to fill in other areas of the jar till he couldn't get any more in. He asked the classroom again, is this jar full? At that point they're a little more hesitant. Well, you know, it looks full. Then he reached over and grabbed a bowl full of sand began to pour the sand in the jar. All right. awesome. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. The sand began to fill in the crevices of the gravel and the gravel in the rock until the jar seemingly was full. Is this jar full? Which point he reached over and grabbed a pitcher of water. Began to pour over the sand and the gravel and the rocks. Until the jar was, in fact, full. But then he asked this all-important question. What is the lesson of this jar? Someone raised their hand and said, just when you think you're, you can't take any more, your life was full of running over, something else can come in your life. Well, that's true. 
about the time we don't think we can t get any more in life, we can't handle any more, all of a sudden something else comes along. Yes. But God gave us this promise, didn't he, that he won't put on us any more than what we can bear. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Professor, let them know this is the main thought of this illustration. If you don't put the big rocks in first, Amen. you'll never get them in the jar. And that is to say to us, God is our big rock. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The scripture teaches us that Christ is the cornerstone. He is the foundation up, upon which our lives are built. Amen. Amen. And if we don't put him in first, yes. then other things can crowd him out. Yes. So the first lesson that we can learn from the life of Mother Thompson yes. is that she demonstrated to us that she put God in her life first. Yes. First and foremost. Amen. Amen. We're living testaments of that today. The second thought, she was a faithful Christian. She was a faithful wife and mother. Married for 20 years. And after her beloved husband deceased, she never remarried. You know, marriage teaches us a lot about life. Marriage, in marriage, there's a lot of give and take. You cannot be a selfish person and have a happy marriage. Amen. It just won't work. Amen. Mother Thompson definitely established that she was not a selfish person. In marriage, you learn principles like do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. She learned to respect her Husband, according to scriptures in Ephesians 5, 33. How do I know that? Not because I knew your father, but I see the life of the children. And I've seen the spirit and the life of Mother Thompson. And I personally am convinced that if her husband were here today, he would tell us that this wife and mother, this mother to more children than any other woman of God that I've ever known has raised more children, had influence in more children's lives than anybody I've known. And I've known a few that have invested in children. The 30 plus children, plus her own, plus her adoptive, plus her sister's children. I believe if her husband were here today, he would tell us, my wife was a Proverb 31 woman. Yes. And Proverbs 31 asks this question. A wife of noble character who can find? And I believe Prentice found a wife of noble character. Just a few of these verses in Proverbs 31 describes to us the kind of character that this kind of woman would have. And I believe this describes a life of Mother Thompson. She was worth far more than rubies. Yes, she was. You come into her presence, you feel her spirit, you sense her spirit, you sense the spirit of God flowing through her. And all of a sudden, you know and understand that, you know what, what I'm experiencing here is worth far more than anything that this world has to offer. A pastor friend of mine in the community was part of the team from the funeral home that came to pick up Mother Thompson just a few days ago. He called me the next day. He said, I understand that 
Mildred Thompson was a member of, of your church. I said, yes, she was. I said, we're, we're so sad to, to lose her. And he said, I just wanted to call and tell you something. And then he asked for Vita's number so he could call her and describe to her what he went through. You know, these funeral directors, when they go, it's just part of life. It's part of the way things are done. But they go in to take care of a deceased body and they have to put the you know, rubber gloves on, plastic gloves on because they're dealing with a body that is now deceased, that is no longer alive, but, but dead. And so I said he was, you know, had the gloves on. He came into the room with the cart to take out her body. And he says that he began to reach down to her body. The Holy Spirit stopped him. The Holy Spirit said to him, take your gloves off. You're about to touch one of my precious saints. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He had never met her in the natural. But God gave him witness in the spirit. Proverbs 31 begins or continues and says, her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good and not harm all the days of her life. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes seat among the elders. She's clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. She is clothed with strength and dignity. Again, she can laugh at the days to come. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. They were left with this instruction. Honor her for all that her hands have done. And let her works bring her praise at the city gate. I wonder if you'd stand with me. And in your own words, in the knowledge that you have, in the relationship that you had with Mother Thompson. Just speak out to the Lord the honor that is due this woman of God. Father, I honor you. I honor Mother Thompson. I honor the saint that she was. The servant of the Lord that she was. The life that you granted her, Lord, through which she stewarded. Not only her life, but the life of so many others. The words of life that she spoke into her children and into the other children that she gathered around her. The prayers that she prayed. I honor her, Lord. As a priest of this household of faith, Lord, I honor this woman of faith that would walk into this church. The atmosphere of this church was changed because of her presence. Because, Lord, she was one who spent time with you. When she came into this house, Lord, she brought your presence with her. 
Lord, we will always, always be thankful and grateful until we meet again. Lord, we honor. We honor the life of this woman of God. And we are so thankful, Lord, today. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a clap off and a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated briefly. My last thought. Because she put God first. The faithfulness of God that touched her, that she in turn touched others. She lived her life as a faithful servant of God. It's been talked about. She is a woman of prayer. Yes, she was. Four o'clock in the morning, who knows how many countless names Amen. have been called out. Amen. Who knows how many situations in life that she prayed to people through. My prayer today, Lord, let that anointing rest on somebody else in this house today. Let someone, when they leave this place today, pick up that mantle and carry it. Woman of prayer. She was a woman who preached the word, prophesied the word, spoke the word. She was a woman who was faithful to participate in the work of God. God's kingdom work was priority in her life. What I know because of those of us who are gathered in this place, people. Mother Thompson loved people. She didn't care if you were black or white. She didn't care if you were young or old. She didn't care if you were rich or poor. She loved people. And that love was revealed through her eyes. The kindness of God that you could just see that just reverberated through you when he talked to her. And through her words. Kind words, compassionate words, life-giving words. She was all about people. And I stand before you today to say, I've been blessed to know a lot of people in this life. Mildred Thompson will go down as one of the most meaningful and one of the most impactful individuals that I've met in this life. And today, we celebrate the reality that she is no longer suffering, but she has obtained her final reward. The thing that she would want all of us here to know, she's not coming back to us, but we can't all go to her. And she wants us all to come. Amen. I do not believe I would be a very good pastor or that I would be honoring to her if I did not at least give anyone in this house, if you don't know the Jesus that Mildred knew, it's as easy as ABC. A, you simply admit, yes, I've sinned. I've made mistakes. I've I've never met a person in this life yet that has not at least been willing to say, oh yeah, I've blown it. I've made mistakes. I've sinned. But this is the crux of the matter. B, you have to believe. You have to believe that Jesus is the only one that can save you. He's the only one that can forgive you. He's the only one that can turn your life around and give you a new heart and a new start in life. And the way he does that is when we simply come before him and confess our sins to him in full repentance. Repentance means 
we do an about face, we turn around, we say, you know what? I'm not going to live that way any longer. Hallelujah. So if you're here today and you've not made that choice yet, today is your day. And it'll bless and it'll honor Mother Thompson if you made that decision today. Yes, I admit my sins. Yes, I believe Jesus is the only one that forgive me. Yes, Lord, I confess my sins to you. If you do that today, please tell someone else. Let someone know. Today is a day that I, that I got a new start in life. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going to hear from this lovely choir again. We'll be coming back and closing the service here in just a few moments. Thank you so much for being with us today. What a wonderful celebration we're having. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Pastor, you bless my soul. You bless my heart, my mind this evening. God is a good God. And Mother Thompson is because we are here, brought us together. Family, I'd just like to tell you, keep looking to the hills from which cometh your help. I know your help come from the Lord. And I'm glad today that I heard the many of you talk about the lady that she was and what she did for you. But she did something for me today. I realized that the Lord, again, he smiled on me. And I want to tell him, thank you. How many of y'all thank him this evening for what he did for you? Go ahead and give him the praise. Give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes, sir. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you. I thank you, Lord, right now. And the reason why, listen here. Evening. Go ahead and lift your voice and help us oh. sing.
listen to this. I came to Jesus. Just as I was. I was weary and wound, y'all. And I was so sad. But you know what I kept on searching that. Thank you, Lord. We're going to close in prayer in just a moment. 
after which they've reopened the casket. If you'd like to come back for a final uh, goodbye. Uh, also, to let you know, we do have a meal prepared back in the Family Life Center. You go out these left doors, or if you go out the main sanctuary doors, turn left down the hallway and through into the uh, Family Life Center. Uh, just a time of fellowship and uh, allow for some reacquaintances, maybe meeting some new people for the first time that you haven't seen. This often happens in large families when you, when you uh, get scattered around the country, so to speak. Also, uh, Ms. Vita, any instruction on Monday? Is that open to everybody okay? Um, remind me of that time. It's 1025. 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, the burial down at the Veterans, Florida Veterans Memorial uh, there in uh, Bushnell. And uh, they are very prompt on their time. And so I encourage you, if you do want to come to the burial service, to uh, be there early. I would suggest no later than 1045 to get in line. Uh, because once they lead you through, if you're not there, you cannot uh, get in, okay? So uh, please, if you want to participate with the family on Monday down in Bushnell, then please feel free uh, to join us there. Let's stand together again. So many things that have been said. Kind words, wonderful songs sung. It's hard to bring an end. So in truth, we're not really bringing this to an end. Because although, again, Mother Thompson has gone to glory, she's passed from glory to glory, we are living out her faith, her life. Because she touched us, we in turn will touch others. Because Jesus touched her life and she touched our lives, as we continue to live out the goodness of God, Amen. then we'll continue to honor the Lord and we'll continue to honor saints like Mother Thompson who paved the way for us. So hold on to that. Don't let go. Remember, this is not the end. It's just a stopping place. It's just like, you know, pulling over, going down the interstate, you have a little rest area. Just pull over for a few moments of rest. Then I'm going to go on the journey until the Lord calls us home. Lord, thank you. This wonderful time of celebration that we've had today to remember the life of Mother Thompson. Again, Lord, we honor her today. Lord, we pray for strength and encouragement, Lord, to the children, to the grandchildren, to those who do her best, were most involved in her life, and to those that will miss her most. Lord, we pray for strength for them. Today, Lord, and in the coming days, Lord, as we mourn her passing, as we sorrow, we thank you that as the scripture says, we do not sorrow as those who have no hope. Yes. Lord, even though we may sorrow, Lord, we have hope, and that hope is found in you. And Mother Thompson helped to point the way to you, and Lord, we're, we are forever grateful. Lord, we pray for strength and encouragement. Give to these family, these friends, these that have known her. Lord, we pray that the testimony that she has left us, may that testimony continue to live through us, oh God, we pray. As was stated earlier, that because of her personality, but we liken also her spirit because of her personality and her spirit. Lord, she drew many people to you. Lord, may just a portion of that anointing rub off on us, oh God. Like Elisha when he prayed. When, when his master Elijah ascended into heaven. He cried out, let a double portion fall on me. 
Lord, may there be a double portion of Mother Thompson's anointing. Rest on someone in this house today. To anyone who would say, Lord, let that be me. I want to be that candidate. That we would walk in the faith. That we would walk in the boldness. That we would walk in the love of God that Mother Thompson lived and walked in. We thank you for it all today. And as someone else stated so aptly earlier, good night. We will see you in the morning. In Jesus' name, amen Amen. and amen. God bless you. We love you. Thank you so much for being with us today. Please take your time to visit with her and then make your way back to the Family Life Center.